In this worked example, I'm going to show how we can use angular momentum to solve problems. In astronomy, this is normally orbit problems, but for the worked example, I'm going to do something closer to home. Let's say you're swinging a ball round on the end of a string. and The string goes through a loop, maybe a toilet roll or something like that, and then has a weight on the end. It's moving in the circle with velocity v, radius r. Now, let's say you start throwing it. So you start with a velocity v naught at r naught. Is it going to stay there, or will it move in because the weight will pull the string down? We'll assume there's no friction here, or will it go out because it's going too fast? Well, we can work out where it's going to be stable by noticing that there's going to be a tension force in the string. Tension forces work both ways, so there's a tension force there, there, because, and here, and here. So it's pulling that way. So the tension force here is pulling up, and when it's balanced, it's all spinning at the same position, that must balance the gravitational force down there. So if you do a free body diagram for the weight, you've got m g downwards and tension upwards, so tension equals mg, where m is the mass of the weight. Now if you look here, your free body diagram, you've just got tension inwards, and because it's moving in a circle that must be supplying the centripetal force, so we know that t is also equal to centripetal force mv squared over r. Now I suppose you need to differentiate between the mass here and the mass there. I'll call that one a big m and this one a little m. So that should be a big M here. Okay, so that um, gives us one possibility. But you can see that this is not has two unknowns. Um, the velocity and the radius. You know what they start off at, but you don't know whether... So if, if you calculate this and it's smaller than that, then it's going to move in. If you calculate this, it's bigger than that, it's going to move out. But it would be nice to find out where it actually equaled equilibrated. For that, we're going to need another equation, because we've got two unknowns here, because you'll know both velocity and the radius where it evens out. So we can use angular momentum, which is going to serve. So angular momentum is mvr. Um, so when it starts, that's going to be mv naught r naught but it's always going to be the same. So what we get is that VR equals V naught R naught. It's cancelling the masses. So we've got two unknowns there, V and R, two unknowns there. We can solve to get where the equilibrium position is going to be. So let's say we want to work out what R is. Let's rearrange this to make R. So R is going to be mv squared over mg and v is going to be v naught r naught over r so substitute that into here and we end up with r equals m over mg v squared which is v naught squared r naught squared over r squared. So move the r squared up here. We end up with r cubed equals m over m big M g v naught squared r naught squared. So that and take the cube root here. And so that should tell us where things will even out at that radius. And you could then substitute that back into here to find the velocity at this particular position.